All right, fellas, I've kept my Mark and his escort cars with. Midland Carbiate, absolutely, uh, absolutely Frank love it. Adam, nice absolutely to meet you. Absolutely love it. Quite a special car, isn't it? It's well, got quite a cool history. Wise, yes, I've, I've started to do a bit of digging uh, on that private number plate and find out that it's had that since it was built brand new. Uh, what I've found out, uh, I've got an old registration document as well, which helped, was it was originally built in 1993 for uh, by a company called Malcolm Wilson Motorsport, which we all now know today, if you're a motorsport guy, as M Sport, M -Sport. running the Ford WRC team. They built the car for a dealer team in London called Peacocks of Balham. It was driven in 93 and 94 by a guy called Rod Menzies. Uh, competed alongside you, the most famous Escort Cosworth in Britain, as far as I'm concerned, the Michelin Pilot. We all know that one, uh -huh. Malcolm Wilson. This competed alongside it, a bit further back in the season. But it competed alongside it in the network QREC rally. Uh, 93 it did that, 94 it did that. It did the Malcolm Wilson rally up in Cumbria. Uh, 94 I think it finished ninth overall. Uh, it did the Dockery's rally in 94 with Rod. It finished 6th overall. Then 95, can't find much that it did. We think possibly the, the owner of Peacocks of Balham, a guy called Alan Peacock, possibly used it in Belgium, but I've not been able to find out exactly uh, if he did or not. And what I do know though is in 96 it went back to M Sport. Uh, they rebuilt the car, uh, changed the colour from red to white. Uh, also changed it from right hand drive to left hand drive and they used it for six, nearly six years as a WRC recce car. Now it was run under management of a team called GSE which is Gordon Spooner Engineering. I've contacted a couple of guys who previously worked there and had some interesting stuff come back to me. I've done the car as a Francois Delacour replica of his 1994 Monte Carlo winning car not thinking for a minute Francois Delacour has ever sat in this car, I then find out that he possibly has, <laughs> which is a very big surprise. A guy called Clive Taylor, he used to work for Gordon Spooner Engineering, is pretty sure, but he needs to check his records, that Francois drove this in 2001 when he was driving a Ford Focus WRC car for the Ford team. I've also had confirmed from another guy who worked at GSE that it was mainly Peter Solberg's car when he started with Ford in 1999 and he used it in 1999 and in 2000 and I've also got an eyewitness report from a previous co-driver that Ari Vatanen used it in the RAC rally in 96 to wrecky the event before, before actually doing the main event in a, a full group A Escort Cosworth. So yes, Amazing. it's got quite an interesting history that definitely with the private number plate has helped sort of trace back, people remember it a little bit easier than maybe because of the number plate, so it's quite surprising, didn't know any of that when I bought it, I had no idea, uh -huh. uh, what I might find out in the future, I have no idea either. Where uh, did you find it then to buy it? Uh, it came through a friend uh, who has quite a large collection of Ford Motorsport cars, rally cars marked to escorts, escort cars with WRCs, I had a road car, Escort Cosworth in quite a rare colour of silver. It's nice, I've and, seen the yeah. pictures, nice. And for the last four years this friend has been asking to buy it several times. Your and, silver one? Yeah, and I, I really didn't want to let it go. It, not because it was rare in the colour, it's just Escort Cosworth to me, since I was a young 20 year old guy, watching these doing the rallies in the 90s, was the dream car. Uh -huh. All, always been the dream car. Uh -huh. And to finally achieve, 25 years later, buying one, you don't let that dream go so easily no. once you've got hold of it. So it wasn't, I knew it was going up in value, but it, it, the value wasn't what it was for me. It was the car, the car was so special to me. And the only thing that ever tempted me away from the car is another one. So this came along through a deal that he'd done uh, from Ireland, came to Scotland. The day it got here, a friend of mine and a neighbor across the road told me it was here. He says, you need to come see what's in the garage. I says, what is it? He says, just come and see. So I was only a few minutes away from the garage when he phoned me. So I went straight up, walked in the garage, and he says, that's got you written all over it. <laughs> I says, who owns it? And he says, Tom. And I went, okay. I says, so I take it as a deal here. I says, with the silver one and on this one. And he says, well, something can be worked out. And over the next few weeks, that's exactly what we worked out. I originally Such tried to keep the silver one and buy this, but space garage wise, it wasn't working out. So uh -huh. everybody won. This came to Scotland, I got this. Tom, the fella I was telling you about got the silver car, he's happy, it's in his private collection now, so everyone's a winner. I was always into the rally escort causers rather than a road escort causers. Never thought that I would get one. And when I got this, the original plan in the dream was always to do the Michelin Pilot escort replica. But the original car's still in Scotland up in Aberdeen, and it has been since the 90s. And I thought I was going to go to a show with a replica, and the original might show up and they also meant a full wrap or a full repaint in blue and yellow and it came very very tidy and white and it was really fresh and I thought it, so having spoken to the sign writing company it was easier to do this and this is like the group A WRC type car 
uh, from 94 of Francois Delacour and was my second favourite livery. And since then I've been adding little tweaks to it. Just it's amazing, it right. isn't it? Yeah, I had to get my headlights from Spain. Uh, things like the front splitter, the RS500 grills. The lamp pod came with the car, thankfully, so we Did had it? that. Yeah, you're saying this is carbon fibre, isn't it? Yeah, it's carbon fibre. We, you see the wave coat, underneath. You can see it through, yeah. And then you've got PIA lamps. But some of the things, the RS tax on them, like these side lights here, I had to buy a new side light because one was quite aged and, and cloudy. But you, finding them in the first place and then the cost of them, the RS tax. I bet. A bit, bit of a kick in the nuts. Yeah, definitely. Can we put the bonnet? Because it's pretty yeah. interesting there. And here you've got the big turbo lump. This here is what you call the turbo restrictor, 34 millimeter restrictor, sealed. So it's sort of old school from back in the day. Uh, the last known rally that I know the car has done was in 2006, uh, which was a circuit of Kerry tarmac rally. It was driven by a guy called Paddy Kelly. I can't find out that much more about him other than that. Uh, but what you're looking in there is pretty much Group N. It looks mint under the bonnet, man. It's, it's tidy. I mean. For a rally car, it's fine. For you know, people are taking cars like this, restoring them, doing nothing bolt to go and show them and things like that. But then you uh, don't want to use it, so it's a very usable turnkey car. It's reliable since we got it. Put new timing belt and things like that on it, and it's pretty much turnkey and go. You were saying it's a, you, you think it's about between 280 300 yeah, brake my, horsepower. My, I've not had it on a rolling road, but I, I wouldn't imagine that it would have been any more than 300 brake horsepower. Back in the day, it would have been limited to that or less. And uh, they're limiting things, this isn't it? Yeah, that, so it's, it's limiting the amount of air that the turbo can suck actually in. suck in. So to take that away and, and make it straight through, would have to, it doesn't involve just doing that. You would have to obviously remap it as well uh -huh. because you're changing the fuel in uh, uh, the air. Their floor. When you were coming through here, like when, when like a forest at the minute, when you were driving through from behind, you got the anti-lag on and it's popping in. Bang, bang, bang. That, just that, that just, when, when I was a young 20 year old guy in the forest watching these cars, when these were the prime, these were the business as far as, you had obviously Colin and his Subarus, originally the Legacy and then into the Impreza and, and this was along with that era. Ford were doing absolutely fantastic with Francois Delacour and I think in 95, or even, no 94 sorry, he could have been world champion but he had a road accident out right. with rallying and a Ferrari F40 or something like that that belonged to a friend and he, he crashed into someone who was actually wrecking in a clubman car for a French rally and, and they crashed and, and they believe he had quite a lot of damage to his legs, possibly breaking his ankles and he was out most of the rest of the season. Now, the previous seasons to that he had been getting second, second, then first and then the beginning of 94 he was first on the Monte Carlo rally. If he continued that season he could have made the escort Cosworth a world champion rather than being second place uh, and he could have been a world champion himself but these things happen, the accidents happen, so they so then extended the life of the Escort by making it a WRC version, which you've seen with the different bumpers and the different The new spoiler, style, yeah, spoiler and front bumpers. Until it had the Focus ready and then once they brought the Focus in and brought Colin McRae in and Carlos Sainz in, things started to improve, but even then it was patchy with Colin, there was wins and crashes, and, but again, Ford has always been that sort of team, they either win or they don't. You were saying the Wales Ma original magnesium ones Yeah, well, they, they came as part of the deal. They didn't come with the car originally when it came over from Ireland, but they came part of the deal with the silver one going to my friend. And their magnesium WRC 18-inch tarmac wheels, so they're, they're quite a rare wheel, 18-inch, 18, 18 8-inch wide. They're on road tyres at the moment because we've driven here, but uh -huh. I've, I've got Michelin tarmac tyres. Have for, you? Yeah. So it's going to get shown at the NEC next month, so it'll be, on, it'll be trailered there and it'll be on the tarmac rally tyres and go there. Then you've got a big set of AP brakes beneath those. And then you've got coilover Bilstein front suspension. Uh, we've got Proflex with remote reservoir back suspension. Then you've got a Quaif Big Tooth straight cut gearbox, uh, five speed. You've got plated diffs. Is that underneath just full of like guards and yeah. stuff like that? At the moment, the, there's the Kevlar floor guards going up there off at the moment, but there's a big a aluminium type sump guard underneath there, uh, protecting the engine and then the gearbox. You probably can see it. Oh, you see when you look down. Yeah, and then obviously the back diff's protected as well. Such a cool car. The only Amazing thing really car. underneath it is obviously the prop shaft between the the diffs. So on a normal Escort cause, well, if your fuel tank would be underneath the car, under the but, floor. But Obviously in a rally car they're, they're, they're trying to bring all the weight for a centre of gravity but also to protect it. Uh, so it's in sort of a protected fuel cell here inside the car. Uh, and that's it. What? I like that man. And there you go. And then there's your fuel in there. I'm having to run that E5 now because obviously fuel's changed from uh, back four star leaded back in the day. 
it smells nice. Yeah, lovely smell. I like your magazine there. Yeah, that was the guys at uh, the garage that did the light recommissioning, put, doing the timing belt, things like that, putting it back in the road. Left well, up for you? Yeah, for a laugh. It was a little present. Took yeah. a couple hours to notice it, but I'm quite happy leaving it there. As yeah. long as it doesn't offend it's, anybody. I've uh, seen a few of them magazines over my time. Yeah. And then <laughs> in here, that, this here, which the tank here for the water injection, which is spraying a mist into the intercooler. When the anti lags on, the ECU decides uh, when to do the spray makes the, the charge, obviously the air coming into the turbo that bit cooler. Uh -huh. but, uh, anyway, so that's the pumps here through this little filter, through this, it basically looks like a Ford Fiesta or something. Uh, just a washer. Windscreen washer ah, bottle that's been, been fitted in. It's got the sign on the top, yeah, hasn't it? So it's an Escort or something back in the day, they just fitted it in. Then obviously you've got your spare wheel, you've got your cage here, your helmet net, and then down in there you've got your plumbed in fire extinguisher system. Aye. Should we go for a drive? Yeah. On the gearbox, box mine. Yeah. Proper rally car now. He's Aye. Everything now is sequential. Aye. The, 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 this is old school. Remember, we'd call him McRae won the World Rally Championship. He was in what is called the H part of the gearbox, a well, proper car gearbox. Uh -huh. Right. Now everything's Aye. open now. Yeah. Flappy paddle. Whereas that, that's why I like that, that. This is the last type of car. These type of cars of the era when you could buy a road car version of the cars ah. you were watching in the rallies. Like a homologation type yeah, car? Yeah, th that's exactly that's exact what, now that, that's all gone. I mean, you see the Fiesta R5s and things like that, there's some bits of kits, but you don't, you can't buy a road car no. version. The, the Group A version is where I had a six-speed gearbox, this has got a five. This is a five-speed? Yeah.
<laughs> the anti lag and the stones flicking up. Oh, the noise, because it's just bare metal underneath. No, this metal still doesn't sound noisy. That was incredible, that though. What a wee bit of air there as well. I know, I know, probably. There must be Jamie Lionel and I picked this kind of pole, is it? Yeah. Like the gear box and that? Yeah. <laughs> Drive through, I was just seeing everyone looking at the car. It's one of those cars, if you misbehave, everybody will remember. I mean, you don't get away with nothing. They're all going to be able to describe what the car was. <laughs> and remember, so... No, they're not, they're not, uh, not many of these kicking about. No. It's so cool to see all the old earpiece stuff and all the old fittings. Yeah. That there's the, the brake bias there. Yeah, well. is. Hey, the stone's flicking up. How much travel's on the suspension, do you know? Well, we're being tarmac suspension just now, it'll be quite stiff. Whereas if it had been forest, the car would have been higher up and obviously a bit more supple. Yeah. This tarmac, did you see it now? Yeah, it's uh, tarmac at the moment. That's why the wheels are bigger, bigger brakes on tarmac. Uh -huh. uh, and obviously stiffer suspension. Whereas in uh, gravel, for, uh, gravel can be 15 inch or 16 inch wheels, smaller brake distance, smaller brakes to fit those wheels, uh, higher, higher ground, suspension, uh, higher ground clearance as well. in the car? I would hope so. The uh, thing is, everything rally-wise, inside this, safety-wise, goes out of date every five years. Your belts, your seats. Uh, so, I'm too grand to put new seats in it. Although there's nothing wrong with these, I've got to replace them for the dates, the belts, get this extinguisher serviced every two years or replace them. Uh, so, I would just bought the car this year and done a deal and then done other things to it. It's an expensive hobby. And then, entering the rally itself, and then tyres, you get your service crew, your guys, mates that you need to hopefully come along and you've got to stop putting them up in hotels and things like that or campsites. So it's an expensive hobby to actually do motorsport, even just for fun. Uh, are these things out there now? Yes. Yeah. Is that not there? 2010 they went out? Yeah. The car was in storage uh, for 15 years before I got it. Right. So I mean, the last known rally, as I said, was 2006. I don't know about doing anything between then and now. Right. Uh, maybe it has, but I, I, I don't know. Going by the dates and the seats and things like that, it looks like it's just been in a, it's just been stormed up and forgotten about. Which it still exists probably because of that. And maybe if it had been continued to use, uh, it could have been a lot more worn out or whatever. Mate, I cannot thank you enough for that experience. Did you enjoy it? I absolutely loved that. I was a bit nervous at first, when first but then I got used to it. I, I absolutely loved that. I bet, I bet there's people out there who pay a lot of money for an experience like that. The car is capable of a lot more with the right person behind the wheel. Uh, I mean, put someone that's a proper, proper competitive rally driver behind the wheel of this, or even a couple of my friends that are really good behind the wheel, and I would shut myself off. <laughs> <probably. laughs> but, uh, <laughs> look, man, I cannot thank you enough for that, like. Do you want to leave any links to your Instagram or anything like that? Just that, yeah, uh, Mark 1GTU on Instagram, yes. Yeah. I'll leave Mark's links in the description below. Uh, but mate, thanks again. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for coming up and seeing the car. I've quite enjoyed showing it off. I've enjoyed being in it. a bit playing, mucky it? and a bit dirty, but that's the whole point of it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed that, fellas. I'll leave my Instagram below as well. Catch us on the next one. Thank you. But, uh, mate, honestly, I absolutely love that. I know what you mean. It's not... Like for 283 and vehicle horsepower, it's, it doesn't feel like blistering mm -hmm. when you're getting all the noises, the pops and the bangs, yeah. and you still feel the turbo. You can imagine 